There is always something. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let's try this again. Good morning. Good morning. Now everybody can hear me, online and in here. So, welcome to Sterling United Methodist Church. My name is Marcella Jarman, one of your pastors, and we are delighted to welcome you to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning. I have a few announcements for you um, to be reminded of what is happening in the life of the church. And the first one is uh, that I want to give thanks. Thanks to all of those who came yesterday to make one more time a blessing, the distribution of food to our community. We created a new record. We serve 151 families, which is, which is approximately, because Jim Jokems gave me this number, approximately 830 people. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those in the um, missions committee to continue to do this and those helpers who come on Friday and Saturday to make this happen. We are so thankful for you. Uh, the United Women in Faith, they used to be the United Methodist Women. Um, they're meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. Uh, for a gathering, I guess to have fun, at Joe's at 7 p.m. So I invite you, if you belong to the group, or if you want to hang out with them, to come to Joe's and have dinner with them, 7 p.m. tomorrow. And in two weeks, uh, we have a very important uh, event happening in the life of this church. We will be uh, dedicating a tree that uh, was planted two years ago, or a year and a half ago, um, in honor of Pastor Steve Vineyard. And we will finally have this dedication. His family will come and we will be here with them in one service. July 24, we will have one service at 10 o'clock so that everybody will be able to participate in the dedication and then we will walk down to the tree, uh, say a small prayer, and then we will have a gathering in Gallihu Hall um, as a brunch uh, where the bluegrass um, group that comes that day and have the music for us will be also playing during that time of, of fellowship. So I invite you to come and invite those who you know knew Steve so that they can um, honor him and remember his legacy to this church. And tomorrow is the second week of summer camp here at Sterling. Uh, we still have some openings for the small children, so if you know anyone who's looking uh, for their kid to be somewhere else, not in their house, <laughs> I invite you to tell them that we're still open, and Heather will love for you to drop them here. And the following week, July 18th to the 22nd, is Vacation Bible School Week, and we have a lot of kids for that one, so praise the Lord, but we need helpers. We need helpers to welcome the kids, to be with them, to care for them. So if you are able to come and help us during that week, July 18th to the 22nd, we would love to have you. And last but not least, I have a great announcement. On July 31st, you know which day is that? No? Okay, I didn't know either until Heather helped me to look out what is that day. It's Avocado Day. <laughs> so, because it's Avocado Day, we're going to have the taco truck that Sunday in here at the church, and we will have a, no chili cook-off, but avocado cook-off. So, bring all your recipes of avocados or guacamole, and it will be the topping for your taco, and we will be voting in any of those uh, dips or guacamoles that you will bring, and the winner will obviously win a prize. So come on, sign up 
I'm going to send a, a sign up genius. Uh, sign up, make your guacamole, and we will all celebrate Avocado Day with our taco truck and make connections, right? Because that is the idea, to make connections between us and the community. So don't miss it. It's going to be epic, the first Avocado Day. <laughs> So these are all the announcements that I have for you this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Technology is wonderful. <laughs> Please stand and join with me in the call to worship. Come awake. The light of the Lord is burning through the, through the darkness. We light and a new sign of hope in times of trouble. Do not fear. The love of Christ opens up in a space of respite and peace for us. We bless this place for sanctuary and rest. Delight in the gifts of the Spirit who set a light to welcome us all. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy has found us here in the house of our Lord, the God and the Father we love. Please remain standing and join us in the opening hymn, number 577, God of Grace and God of Glory. Thank mm -hmm. you.
remain standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Good morning. How are you guys today? Good morning. Well, come here. Come a little closer. I'll come. You guys scoot. I'll scoot. Come on. How has your week been? Have you guys had a good week? Yeah. yeah. Have you had a good summer? Yeah. yeah. I have a question for you. What is your favorite food? Pizza. Pizza. Oh, that's a good one. What's your favorite food? You forget. No, no. Oh, what? Watermelon. Watermelon. But you don't like flavor. You don't. Oh, you don't like things flavored like watermelon. But you like watermelon the fruit. I'm with you there. Sometimes watermelon flavored things are a little. Do you have a favorite? Watermelony. Yeah. You're watermelony. On watermelony. On. <laughs> Not watermelon flavor, but just watermelon. You're right, it doesn't. Watermelon flavor does not taste like watermelon. I see that. Okay. What's your favorite food? French fries. Ooh, pizza, French fries, and watermelon. That sounds... Delicious. <laughs> that sounds amazing for like a summer night by the pool. Yeah. Did you have something else? Do you know why pizza is my favorite? Why is pizza your favorite? Because I love pizza. Because you love pizza? I hate pizza. That is a good reason that that's your favorite. I hate pizza. You don't like pizza? Yeah, no. You know, one of my sons doesn't like pizza either. I don't understand it. I love pizza. I like pizza too. What about, do you ever have days that you're just kind of sad and just kind of like, blah, you don't really feel motivated to do anything? Yeah. What do you like to eat on those days? Is it your usual favorite food or is it something different? Something that brings you comfort? Nothing special? No. How about you, Ezra? Anything special when you're feeling kind of Blah, and just kind of lazy. What? Pizza still? Still feeling pizza? How about you, Matthias? I literally don't care what I eat. I just go around eating. The, eating. You just go around eating. You know what? Me too. I'm just like, 
I just kind of... No, I'm too hungry. I'm just going to eat this and this and this and this. Yeah. Yeah, I think I do the same thing. I just kind of go around and just eat whatever's there. Yeah. Yes? I love pizza. <laughs> That's how you eat pizza? Oh, my goodness. What else can we do when we're feeling kind of blah? Do you guys know what I mean when I say that? Just kind of, ugh. You know what I mean? Just not in the mood to do anything. What else can we do besides eat everything in the house? Because that's usually what I end up doing. What else could we do? Could we read a book? Maybe. Or call a friend? Or, yes. Call a friend. Play a video game, maybe. What about... What if, like, we're feeling kind of nervous or kind of sad? Do you think we could go to God? Do you think God might be there for us? Yeah. yeah. How would you? How do you think we could go to God if we're feeling, feeling kind of nervous or blah? What are some ways we could do that? You think? Prayer. Prayer. Yeah. Maybe you read the Bible, because you know what? This is really cool. I love your socks. This is really cool. God is there for you no matter how you're feeling, even on those days when you just want to eat everything in your house. God is there for you. Is that really cool? Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Should we go ahead and pray? Ready? Matthias, can you help us pray? You are so good at showing us how to pray. Can you show us? Ready? Hands together. Ready? Repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for our comfort foods and for always being here for us. Help us listen when we need help. We love you. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and ever-present God, thank you for a new day and a new opportunity to come to you and drink from the waters of life. Thank you for your daily invitation to receive and accept your grace, your forgiveness, your peace. It is by accepting your grace, Lord, that we have the opportunity to become whole. We recognize that we are broken and in need of you. We need your nourishment. We need your guidance, your daily portion of grace and love so that we can become and your creation. Lord, we want to do what is right in your sight and good for your kingdom. Guide us to your holy presence. Take us to your table. Clean what is decaying our souls and provide us with the bread of salvation. Fill us with your Holy Spirit we desire to taste your goodness and accept your mercy. Lord, many have tasted you and have found what they need, the right portion of peace that endures, the right portion of hope that has lasted during the longest nights of travels. Lord, you are our Alpha and our Omega, our beginning and our end. You are all 
to us. You complete us. You satiate our souls. We are content and happy at your feet. So Lord, do not let us run away and wander far from you. Keep us close and tight. Hear us when we call your name and ask for provision, healing, and guidance. Lord, there are loved ones, friends, and family who are calling your name because they want to taste you. So Lord, we want to remind you of those names, those names that are printed in the bulletin, those that are in our hearts and in our minds. Be with each of them and provide the right portion of healing, comfort, peace, forgiveness, acceptance, and love. Pour over each of them a double portion of your wisdom and your Holy Spirit and let them know that you are God and they are not alone. Lord, we trust in you and in your mighty power to save, to heal, and create new things. And we pray this morning with that trust and in the holy name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, Redeemer, and Sustainer, and the one who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are grateful for the many ways that you give of your prayers, your presence, your gifts, and your service to Sterling United Methodist Church. It enables us to offer the ministries that help people connect with Jesus Christ, grow in faith, and find meaning and purpose as, they, as we all understand the gifts that God has given us and use those gifts in service to God's work here. But it takes resources, and so we're grateful for your generosity. As we, uh, I invite you later on, as we come, as you come forward for Holy Communion, we invite you to place your offering in the plate, or as you are leaving the service, again, there's a plate back there. But thank you very much for the many ways that you bless us. Thank you.
Our scripture for this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 25, verses 1 through 5, and it's from the New International Version. Come, all who are thirsty, come to the waters. If you have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk, without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labor on what does not satisfy you? Listen, listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me, hear and listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you, my faithful promises to David. See, I have made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you will not know, and nations you do not know will listen to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, each new day is filled with your many blessings. Help us to learn to slow down and listen to your leading. We are here to serve your children in love. Thank you always for loving us and guiding us as we serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Donna. Have you ever driven down kind of a secondary road and alongside you see maybe a chair at the end of the driveway with the sign that says free. What does that bring to your mind? Perhaps the sign is next to a piece of furniture that needs restoring and the owner's saying, just take it off my hands and you deal with it. Or maybe it's kind of a rundown looking bicycle that needs a little love and with a little TLC could be very func functional. Or you may see a sign that offers free kittens. Usually they don't have the kittens right out there, but they have free kittens if you're interested. And I imagine that many things, many people may be drawn by that free kitten kind of sign. But then I imagine that many of you have also heard the phrase, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Meaning that some at some point down the road, you're going to have to pay for that quote-unquote free lunch. But in today's passage that Donna led us in reading from Isaiah, tr free truly does mean free. The setting for today's passage is Babylon, and the people of Judah are in exile despite God's fulfilling God's promise to bring them to the land, despite God's faithfulness to the covenant, the people have put their trust in other gods and have turned away from the God of Israel. And since they have broken God's covenant, they recognized that God could distance God's self from them. The people had expended their prayers, their presence, their gifts, and their service had spent those on things that could not satisfy. They were spiritually bankrupt, empty, dead, had nothing to offer, and didn't think they could expect anything from God. The exiles find themselves in this situation because they place their trust in gods other than the God of Israel. And despite these circumstances, the prophet paints a vision that reveals God's steadfast love for God's people. God calls them to return their hearts back to God with words filled with grace. Come, buy, eat, listen, delight, Behold, we are invited to hear God's reality that this everlasting covenant that God promises to the people is truly for life. 
and yet the people are needy. To be thirsty and have no money describes well the situation of what it was like to be in exile. And this traumatic experience of exile and its aftermath depleted the physical, emotional, and spiritual resources of those weary survivors. And yet God never leaves them in despair. God doesn't lead them in their sense of being downtrodden and feeling hopeless. God speaks these words of hope and promise, telling how God desires to give them gifts as a sign that God has not broken God's covenant with them, that God does, continues to desire to give them gifts as a sign of having an abundant life with God. And God calls the people to return their hearts back to God. So the opening verses of this passage extends the invitation to the thirsty, come to the water. To the poor who have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy milk and wine at no cost. God calls them to buy and eat with no money. And so what God is talking about is grace. God is talking about God's unconditional, unmerited love that God has for each person in God's creation. The writer of this passage is talking about enjoying the goodness and the abundance of God, not because of anything that they have done or anything that they owe to participate, Rather, they are able to enjoy because God is good and out of God's love for God's people that God has created, God wants to shower us with expressions of God's love. So what we hear in these words is that God wants you and I to receive the best. And as a way of understanding this deep love that God has for us, even as we are imperfect, we might think about how we do whatever we can to provide for the people that we care deeply about in our lives. Think about how you cared for your children or children in your life, and how we try to feed our children healthy foods. We take them to the doctor for the regular checkups. We make certain they receive their inoculations according to the schedule. We bundle them up in the cold. We apply sunscreen on sunny days. We invest our love, our time, our energy to ensure their well-being. What happens to them matters to us. And at some point, however, they have to make their own decisions, as hard as it is for us as parents. And we hope that we've taught them and set an example of how to make good decisions. We have shown our love for them in thousands of ways, and we hope that that will help them to follow a path of faith and service. And that's the kind of care you and I experience as we have received God into our lives. And this is the kind of care that God was promising the people of Israel. But as children sometimes do, we think we know better and we push back. We make our own decisions. And rather than embrace this great love that God has for us, we seek cheap imitations. Those things that promise much but really don't live up to the hype. Like a job that we thought would bring us the position and the bigger paycheck, but found that the working conditions were challenging. And maybe we entered into a relationship with stars in our eyes that this person was the one. And we later find that the goodness that we saw was only on the outside. Only skin deep. These all capture our hearts in some way, but eventually we may find that we have misplaced our affections, our time, our talent, and our money, placing our trust in all the wrong places. It's like we're looking for love in all the wrong places, like that old country song goes. 
which is why today we're talking about returning or turning our hearts toward God. God whose love never fails, who, that never gives up on us, who's always calling for us, calling us to make God, loving God a priority in our lives. And as we look at how God is responding to the needs of the people in Israel, God is not giving the people just what they need to survive, what they, really, what they really deserve for their unfaithfulness. God's not giving them bread and water rations. God is giving these wayward people the best that God can offer, the finest foods, the best wines, a place at the table with God. For you and I, God gives us not only enough to survive, but God in his love for you and I wants to provide more for us what we need to move on beyond just surviving, God will provide what we need to thrive. We need water to survive, and eventually we need some kind of sustenance. Isaiah reveals God's promise of abundant wine and milk. Come and buy. Eat without money, without price. Come to the table of bounty. Eat the meal that nourishes our body and satisfies our souls. In a few minutes, we will receive Holy Communion. This is a means of grace. This is when we come to the table and as we come, we receive whether we feel worthy or not. Because in God's eyes, each and every one of us is worthy. No matter where we are on our faith journey, no matter what we have done or not done, we are welcomed to this table. And like a good host who offers to take your coat or remove anything that we may have carrying in our hands, Christ as the host offers the invitation to remove any burdens that are on our hearts that may keep us from fully enjoying this gracious meal. And like a good host, as we confess our sins, Jesus forgives us and enables us to have a clean heart because Jesus wants us to enjoy the meal and to feel welcome at the table. The bounty that God promises in the passage of Isaiah is revealed as we will come to the table today. Today's passage is a passage, is a message of grace. It gives us hope that when we have strayed from God, God's love for us remains steadfast. God's promises are true. And that, my dear friends, is very good news. Can we place our trust in the God who loves us so much that God chose to reveal himself in the person of his son, Jesus Christ? Can we place our trust in the good news that God desires for each of us? Can we forgo cheap imitations and seek the real deal? Can we ignore the food that will not satisfy and receive in place the grace that nourishes our soul? Are we on a journey of returning our hearts to God? Because God has never forsaken us. Even when we turn away, God's love remains steadfast. And God is the one who graciously provides the means of forgiveness. Neither the Jews in exile nor we in our own exile can rescue ourselves. In referring to our own exile, I'm referring to the times in our lives when we have perhaps separated ourselves from God's presence, like the times we may have turned away from God and sought our own path rather than respond to God's love for us. And what we read as we continue in this Isaiah passage is that God promises forgiveness an anticipation of going home for, from the exile and of being restored into good relationship with God. And all of this is accompanied by joy. Whereas earlier there was devastation, there is now the renewal of both humanity and nature. What God is doing will be everlasting. It will not be cut off. The prophet invite, invites by saying, come to the water. 
But not only does God offer the water of his life-sustaining presence, he also invites people to come and receive the grace-filled gifts of staples from the abundance of God's own stores. Wine and milk are a step up from water and indicate that God is really throwing a feast and not just supplying the basics. Those who have been surviving on whatever their captors had provided them in their exile, now they are offered a new start, a new economy, an economy of grace and abundance. And the returning exiles were being charged to establish a new spiritual budget where the highest priority is directed to God. God was inviting them to sign again on the dotted line of the covenant that had been in effect since the time of Abraham and had been most recently carried forward by King David. So God invites his people to a new way of ordering their lives, which includes not only their spirits, but their wallets as well. If we dream God's kingdom dream, a dream of justice and peace, a dream of freedom from anxiety, a dream of God's reign and rule on the earth and in our lives, it will radically alter our priorities. We no longer see our money and possessions as ours, but as belonging to God. Because God has given to us in abundance, and we have benefited from God's abundance. And God invites us to share what we have received so that others may come to know the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in their own lives as we have received the bounty of God's goodness in our lives and in our hearts. God calls us to in turn share that with others. And that is good news. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we give you thanks for the many ways that you shower us with your extravagant grace. Lord, we know that there are times when we do not deserve it. We have turned away. We have not heard the cries of the needy and all those ways that we have not been faithful. But here's the thing, Lord. You continue to reach out in your steadfast love. And for that, Lord, we are grateful. And every time you reach out into our hearts with that love, we turn more and more towards your love and your grace. So thank you, Lord, for being persistent and never giving up on us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ, offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, we celebrate an open communion table in the United Methodist Church. And what that means, if the desire of your heart is to draw closer to Jesus Christ, then you are invited and welcome to come to the table. The, the rushers will guide you to the table. Would our communion stewards please come and, and receive?
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we sing our closing hymn. we go from this place to serve God and to love our neighbor. And as we go, we go in the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and always in communion with God's spirit, now and forever. Amen.